I'm Mally Moore. I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. Is it, though? <laughs> I feel like we don't really do our job that well. Well, yeah. I mean, we, pick, we, we specifically pick movies that are difficult, apparently. We think yeah, You're right. that would be a great one, and then like we get down down to it, and we're like, "Fuck, what is the silver lining?" Oh this? yeah, this, this this week was especially <laughs> difficult. Yeah, this is a oh, man. What what's the movie? Uh, hopefully people will have already seen the title. Well, but no, this is the first time we've ever done a movie that you haven't right. seen. <laughs> you're right, and I was so excited to get your reaction <sighs> to this. So I don't. I don't even know where to start. (laughs) The movie was Enemy, 2013. Denise Villeneuve. Is that that his name? Yeah. Sweet. uh, Who, most well known for probably Prisoners and Sicario, but mm -hmm. this was actually, this released after Prisoners, Mm -hmm. but was was filmed filmed before. Prisoners, Sicario, now Arrival, that's in theaters. Only makes, oh, he did Arrival? mm -hmm, Only makes sense that we're, we're covering one of his other, uh, other works yeah he's, he's i haven't seen arrival yet me neither yeah today's episode <clears throat> is again Den- uh denise villeneuve uh this movie stars jake gyllenhaal and uh, jake gyllenhaal jake gyllenhaal and jake gyllenhaal uh melanie laurent and sarah got uh Gadon, Gaden, i'm not sure uh you'll recognize melanie uh from inglorious bastard she plays shosana if you've seen that so. shoshana uh i couldn't find him hmm Hmm. What? No, 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 no. I couldn't find anything on the budget of this movie, and this film only grossed three point four million dollars worldwide. It's kind of a little sleeper cult classic kind of movie, I think. At this point, it's got a seventy five percent certified fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and this movie is earns it. I mean, it's a very I I don't want to say it's a simple movie because no, not, but I think the premise is pretty simple. I the mean, premise is simple, but the world it's in is not. Yeah. So, man, I don't know. Should we talk about this movie before we get into what the film is, or I like because we got a lot to yeah, unpack here. Yeah, there's a we're gonna be spending some time in this room today. If if this is your first episode tuning in with us, you picked a really interesting one because again. This is the first time that we've done this that I haven't seen the movie yeah, that we're doing. I'm until, just gonna say, like. I know a lot of the movies we do are pretty well known, like Requiem and all that. But this, I think, is probably our least known movie that we've done, I think. Possibly. Well, maybe except for Dog Pound. Yeah, yeah. But right. this is definitely one where if you have not seen this movie, you need to watch yeah, it Yeah, you don't right want us to spoil it for now. you. Go watch it and come back and listen to what we got to say about it, because it will trip you out. And... I mean, just go watch it and come back and listen to this because you're going to want to. <laughs> you're going to want to talk thing, about it with somebody. Yeah, so the first the thing I did got. after finishing this movie, opened my laptop and was like, I need to know what the hell just happened. So I guess we should do that. We should just go through the movie normally like we normally do and then just talk about what the hell what happened. this movie is about. All right, let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and take a look at that trailer first. Yeah, let's listen to the trailer uh, and then we'll talk about the trailer itself before we get into what the movie is. You don't go to the movies, do you? I don't, I don't go out that much. Is there a reason why you're asking me this? You know, maybe you had a recommendation. <laughs> Anthony Clare, 3650 Rathburn Road. Hello? Uh, good afternoon. Hey. Um, no, I'm calling to speak Where to Dan. Where are Jane. you calling from? I'm, so- I'm sorry, I, th- I think there's been a misunderstanding. Who is this? Okay, I'm gonna, I'll call back later. Who is on the phone? The same guy who called before. Same guy. Are you lying to me?
are my only son. I am your only mother. He looks exactly like you. What's happening? I, I really don't know what you're talking about. I think you know. Why'd you come looking for me? I needed to know. I have some questions for you. Who are you? What's wrong? You're crazy. I'm crazy! I think this trailer is not a bad trailer. It's not bad. It's a typical trailer, I guess. It's true to the nature of the story, but I just kind of wish they wouldn't have shown the two Gyllenhaals the two together, Jakes. the two Jakes in the same scene. I think it would have been more interesting, like, what if it's <laughs> the same the guy, you know? Because this movie could easily <coughs> fall into that whole, oh, it's the same guy or their brothers kind of thing, yeah, but it like, doesn't. I, like, this trailer, okay, it lets you know what the movie's about. But when you actually watch the movie, that's not what the movie's about. Not really, I don't not at all. Think. Um, like this movie seems so straightforward at first, and then just isn't at all. Yeah, and the trailer kind of plays almost linear to the story. Yeah, just kind of just fast forwarding through it until. Well, I guess let's let's talk about the film before we we ruin it. So, um. All right. Here's um, the thing. God, man. Let's this uh, before we do this. Shit. Actually, I want to talk about uh, Villeneuve here because I think. Okay. I think he might be on to something. The here. biggest troll on the face of the planet. No, uh, no, no. I was going to say. Well, let's get back to that. That's interesting. But I was going to say this dude is up there. Uh, he's done, dude. He no. He's at like recent years. He's one of my favorite. Ever since I've seen directors. Prisoners, I was like, holy shit, this dude is. I got to keep out for him. And yeah, he's like. Man, I, I I don't want to put him on this pedestal because it's an easy pedestal to fall off of. But that dude is riding fucking like Kubrick waves, dude. Mm-hmm. He is up there, dude. He's up there, like him, uh, Nicholas Winding Refn, Nolan. Uh, d- well, I'm just talking about like Reese, like kind of like the new age, kind of like writer director. Yeah, yeah, so, like yeah. him, uh, Nicholas Winding Refn, Derek C in France, C in France, yeah. Um, even Ryan Johnson, uh-huh. like that whole little like crop of writer directors that just popped up in the past like five years or so, yeah, just killing it. And I've and this why this is this movie is interesting to me because he does everything for a reason and everything is so specific and like everything is placed there for a specific meaning. And yeah, there's, I feel like that's there's got to be more to this movie than than I I just saw this movie yesterday for the first time so I'm still processing it and I feel like there's something I I took detailed notes more detailed than I normally take cuz yeah. I know Dennis Villeneuve is 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 going to do that to me he's going to lay things out and like put pull like sheep's wool over your eyes well, yeah, and much. he's one of those directors that if like if it's on screen there's a re- like he doesn't just put something in there like even like in his backgrounds, like graffiti on like the streets and everything, like it's there for purpose. Right. Okay. Well, that with that in mind, let's talk about the movie. <clears throat> um. Also, how do you want to do this? Do you want to to just start the movie and just say Jake Gyllenhaal does this and Jake Gyllenhaal does that, or do you want to go ahead and say? I mean, I feel like which we, version? Uh, yeah, I feel like we're gonna. Have to okay because the movie names right. The, the thing is, at the beginning of the movie too, it's <laughs> c- almost kind of confusing as to which one you're looking at. Oh yeah, like but, there's like you you won't you don't pick up on it until later. But I mean, there is a way to tell them apart. But at first, you know, you don't like you're a little into the story before you realize that oh, this is two different people yeah. or is it? So here's what <clears throat> what we got. We start the movie. and We get this drab orange look at uh what i'm assuming is toronto uh it's just like a big cityscape and we hear uh a cell phone and it's uh adams who is jake john hall's character is adam's mom saying you know i'm glad you're doing well i really don't like your apartment though uh i think she says it's like dingy or something yeah yeah and he's just sitting in his car kind of overlooking the city kind of like not depressed, but kind of just like exhausted. 
I guess would be the word for it. And then it pops up on the, uh, like a title card pops up and it's a quote that says, chaos is order undeciphered. And right away I was like, okay, so this movie is basically the way Denise Villeneuve fucking does his movie. I know that's going to mean something. I know that yeah. obviously that means all this crazy shit I'm going to see has got an underlying theme meaning uh-huh. to it. And wouldn't you know it, the very next shot is a quick shot of just this pregnant nude woman laying in a bed. Of course it is. And then we go right to the next scene. Like, that didn't just happen. <coughs> and, uh... Again, it all serves a purpose. Yeah. We see, uh... We see kind of like this dark hallway. And, uh... Jake Gyllenhaal is walking down the hallway with this key in his hand. And this time, you still think it's the same guy. Because at this point, you don't have a reason. Right, let's go yeah. ahead and say it. This movie is about two Jake Gyllenhaals. Yeah. <laughs> playing two different characters. Yeah. Um... And he's walking down the hall, and this time it's Anthony, the other version of Jay Jalen Hall. We don't know this yet, but... Yeah, we still think it's the same guy. For the sake guy. of us being able to explain this... Yeah. Spo- Spoiler. Sorry. <laughs> he's walking down the Again, hall. watch the fucking movie. He's walking down this hall, and he's got this key in his hand. And he goes to this door, he unlocks the door with the key, and he walks inside. And inside are just a bunch of business dudes smoking cigars... Sitting around like this platform where a woman is in the middle masturbating, and they're all kind of just watching. And this is a very the first the first note I got here was like, okay, this is eyes wide shut, basically. Oh yeah, completely. Right up, right at the top of the movie, uh, and everyone's just kind of watching. There's Those other Kubrick women waves you were talking about. Yeah, there's other women that are walking around with like mask on, and they're like, are they all pregnant? <coughs> I think I saw at least one that was pregnant, right? Uh, I don't know if they all were, but I mean, yeah, there's definitely that one because they yeah. can't explicitly show her. Well, Jake Gyllenhaal just sits down and he does this thing where he's got his 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 elbows on his knees and he's he's got like his he's almost doing like the live long and prosper yeah, spot yeah. thing, like across his nose with both his hands, and it's basically making like V's under both his eyes, yeah. and he does this twice. That's the only reason I mentioned it. Because I'm like, it, there's got to be a specific reason he's sitting exactly like this. And I think Anthony's doing it, and then later on, Adam's doing it to show yeah. that they're a little more connected, too. But he, I noticed he had a wedding ring on, right? Yep. So that's kind of how you can tell that's, these two apart. That's literally how you tell the two apart. So he's got this wedding ring on. And again, at this point, you don't realize it's two separate people. You think it's the same guy. But he's sitting down, and this woman walks, this pregnant woman, I think she's pregnant. Uh, walks by and puts this this like platter down on the platform in front of him and pulls the lid off and it's a giant tarantula, and it goes to try and walk away and again all the business dudes and everyone's watching <coughs> with like not much anticipation they're just kind of watching and she like places her heel on top of this tarantula like she's about to crush it yep and then we cut to okay um this <laughs> is scene this is actually something I didn't notice so uh-huh. and then I read about it and had to like go pull up the scene again to see. Apparently, that is a pregnant spider, too. I can see that, because it looks really big. Yeah, like, you can... Well, apparently, like, if you look closely, you can see it's, like, in the process of, like, laying an egg or whatever it is, that however spiders do it. So maybe that has more meaning now that she's trying to... Almost trying to crush it. Yeah. Which, All like right. I said, we're gonna... There's... Yeah. And up to this point, there's not been any dialogue other than nope. uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's mom on the cell phone. But we do get to hear his first words, Adam's first words. Yeah. And his first words are... Control. Control. It's all about control. And again, I'm like, all right, that's got to mean something. And it goes back (laughs) in line with this chaos thing. Well, he's a college professor. He's giving this lecture about dictators. And he's saying, you know, control, it's all about control. Dictators are only able to stay in power because they have control. (laughs) Excuse me. And they said, uh, he says, you know, they... Back then, like, the Romans would keep the populace in control by entertainment. You know, they would have circuses and all these other kind of things. And that's really it. He kind of just ends his lecture and he's like, all right, see you tomorrow, whatever. Uh, walks uh, walks to the bus station. Well, What's up? There's his other quote in there, too. Oh, did I miss one? It is important to remember this, that this is a pattern that repeats itself throughout history. Oh, no, no, no. I was coming back to that. That's the oh, second okay. time. Oh, is it the second yeah, time? Yeah. I Here's thought that was he all does... in one time. No, well, it might oh, be. Wait, I noticed it right, the second right. time. But yeah, he, he, he gives this lecture. He hops on the, the, the tram. And he goes home. Uh, he, has, <laughs> he does have a little bit of a... It's not a dingy apartment. It's still a fairly nice apartment in the city. Yeah. 
But uh, he has a candlelit dinner with uh, with Mary, who is uh, Melanie, who, what's her face? Shosanna. Um, they have a candlelit dinner. They go to bed. They have, you know, a fairly routine sex scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we cut back, and we're back in the classroom again. And he's kind of, he's giving the same lecture. And he says, that's where he says the line, you know, this that's is a pattern right. that repeats itself throughout history. Although, talking about if you, dictators. If you pay attention... Hmm. These little where it keeps cutting back, it's the same day. The same day? Yeah. You mean literally within 24 hours of each other? No, no, no. Like, this is all during the same lecture. Oh! You can see it's the, he's, it's, it's the same kids in there? Same kids dressed the same, yeah. See, what I thought was... Again, it's, the, he's fucking with us. This director is I thought what was happening, yeah, I thought what was happening was, he's giving the lecture, he's going home, he's having sex, and the next day he's doing the same thing with... You know, because te- professors will have more than right. one class, and okay, so it's the same day. It's just yeah, different which parts again, of the day. Like there are so many things that, like, I had to, like, I read about them. I was like, wait, what? Go back, and I was like, oh, like there is so, so much. It's basically stuff. playing with time here, which yeah, again goes back with this line of it's a pattern and everything. Basically, he gives this thing, and what you're supposed to take away from this scene is this, this guy basically lives a boring life. He gives the same lecture, he has the same dinner, he has the yeah. same sex. But I didn't know it was the. The, all within a day. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, he's one day he's in this break room on, <laughs> on the college campus, and this is a. I want to talk about this scene for a good bit because okay. this is like okay the inciting incident almost yeah like or a build up to it, but he's just sitting there and he's kind of just reading to himself, and this other colleague in the break break room is like, do you, uh, do you go to the movies? And Jake Jonah is kind of taken aback. Adam is taken aback, and he's like, "What?" And he's like, "Oh no, it's just asking if you go to the movies." And uh, basically, the guy ends up recommending a movie to him. And the, this movie is—it's a fake movie, but it's yeah, called yeah. "Where There's a Will, There's Wait, a Way." Did you, did you look it up too? I did. I yeah, immediately same. looked it up. Like I was like, "What is this movie?" But uh, yeah, he—he's like, "Oh no, there's this great movie where there's a will, there's a way. You should check it out." And Jake Jonah was like, "All right, yeah, sure, I will." And so. On his way home from from campus that day, he stops at like this kind of secondhand movie music store, and uh, he picks up a copy of it. And he goes home, and he's doing like the same thing: the candlelit dinner with his with his girl. And she's like, "Are you are you gonna come to bed?" He's like, "Well, I got a great papers, and then I'll I'll come in there." She's like, "Okay." So she goes to bed. By the way, there's a sh- a shot in this this uh, <laughs> this scene that I thought was really weird, but it doesn't do anything. At least I don't think it does anything. It's, she says, I'm going to go to bed. He goes, okay. And she goes to walk to the bedroom, and then the camera is outside mm-hmm. watching her. And as she goes into the room, it kind of swings around and follows her. And you can still see his, like, part of his body in the kitchen. And it's just really weird. It's like, it's a very intricate shot. And I'm like, why is this shot in here? And I feel like I'm, it's going over my head. Because there's no reason he would put that there. For, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But if you've seen the movie or. <sighs> You know what like shot I that kind of yeah, I know what shot you're talking about. Um, again, we'll get into that in our post-ending discussion as to what I think the movie is about. Okay, because that kind of ties in. I mean, it might be a bit of a stretch, but I think I can make that shot make sense. Okay, we'll come back and talk about that guy as well, the colleague that recommended the movie. But we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go back over this whole movie pretty much. Uh, and then there's a little bit of an awkward sex scene here. Like, there, it's the same kind of sex scene we've seen before, before between Adam and Mary. But she, I guess, kind of winces in pain and makes a comment, and they kind of just stop. I guess, like she, she says, you know, she's in pain, and they stop. And then we we cut to like this dream sequence. Well, I'm sorry, I skipped a part. Before they go to the sex scene, he actually watches the movie. He got mm-hmm. the movie from the secondhand store on his laptop, and. You know, he watches the movie, he's like, alright, closes it and goes to bed. And they have the awkward sex scene, and then there's like a dream sequence that's a portion of the movie he watched. Yeah. Uh, and, and it kind of just happens. It's almost like a silent film with music, and it's in color. Uh, but it kind of just plays out, and all of a sudden he just kind of wakes up from it. And he goes back to the laptop, and he kind of s- scrolls through the movie and stops on a character, a bellhop character, and he realizes... That this character in this movie looks exactly like him, this actor. Like, it looks exactly like him, and he's kind of freaked out by it a little bit. Uh, but then we we go we go back to the campus. Like, we kind of go from that. We, we, we hear uh, Adam talking over the scene, 
like like an uh, over a voiceover saying, "All the great world events happen twice. The first time is a tragedy. The second time is a farce." And so he's back in the college classroom giving this lecture, whatever. And again, that obviously means something. That something's going to happen twice here. He goes home and he looks up the name of the actor from the movie, and then the actor's name is Daniel St. Clair. And so he goes and basically looks what up a his silly name. Yeah, he goes back and basically looks up his IMDb and f- finds out oh he's he was in two other movies. So he goes and rents the other two movies and he comes home and he watches them and sure enough, this actor is again in the same movies and looks yeah. exactly like him. And so uh, <coughs> he's a little I don't know what the word is I don't think scared or confused I think he's just kind of like in- intrigued. Yeah. Right. Which again is like. Not a normal reaction. No, I'd be like, I think if I, if I saw it look just like that, I'd be like, holy fucking shit. See, I kind of would be the opposite. I'd be like, well, there's only so many different combinations of, I've had a lot of people tell me, dude, I saw your twin last night oh, or yeah. a guy that looked just like you. And I'm like, um, that's not surprising. I'm a dude with a beard. It's not a white guy with a beard. You oh no. I always, like every day I always get someone be like, oh man, I saw a movie with your doppelganger right now. I'm like, oh cool. Who? And it's always a Shia LaBeouf movie. <laughs> Um, so he is, goes through this, these boxes that are in his house and he finds like this torn photo of himself. Yep. And in the photo, somebody has their arm around him and he can't, yeah, obviously can't, can't see who, see who it is because it's torn. And then he goes, he, he get, basically gets <clears throat> Daniel's, uh, talent agency's address. Yeah. And he's going to go to the building, but he stops and gets a pair of sunglasses from like a convenience store or whatever. And I got to ask. Do you know why he gets the sunglasses? I have no clue. My initial thought They're also such silly sunglasses. They're almost like Gucci sunglasses. Yeah, like Gucci knockoffs. They have like the big like emblem on the side and everything. Well, here's my thing. I thought, okay, he's trying to disguise himself to go into this talent agency. But then I realized there's no need for a disguise if you look exactly like... Maybe they he thinks they have different eye colors. I don't know. Maybe. But I could not figure out why he needed the sunglasses. Basically, he goes to this talent agency... And he waits outside until someone comes out where he's able to sneak in. And he goes inside, and he's kind of just looking around. And the security guard calls him Anthony. He's like, Anthony, is that you? I haven't seen you in so long, you know? Six months. Six months. And, uh... Again, I think that six months is irrelevant. <clears throat> okay. I would not be surprised to find mm-hmm. out that it is. But Adam's kind of like, oh, yeah, I was here to pick up the thing for the movie. <laughs> And the security guard's like, oh, okay. And he hands him an envelope on it that says... Uh, like, how lucky was that? <clears throat> yeah. Well, <clears throat> he hands him this package and it says or Daniel St. Clair on it. And he goes outside, he opens the package, and inside is an envelope that says Anthony Clair. So he's like, oh, okay. Anthony Clair is the real name of Daniel St. Clair. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Michael J. Fox isn't his real name. It's just his name that he goes by as an actor. Anyways... On this envelope, he gets an address for Anthony, as well as, I believe, a phone number, if I'm not mistaken. And he said he decides he's going to drive to this address. <clears throat> and he gets to this building, and it's kind of like a, a gated community, kind of, like where you can't get into the building unless, you know, you have a key or something. Mm-hmm. And so he, he makes a phone call. Oh, a key, weird. Yeah. <laughs> he makes a phone call to the phone number, and this woman answers. <coughs> and he's like, hi, you know, I'm looking for Anthony, whatever. And this woman's kind of giggling. She's like, why are you... Uh, why are you calling from a payphone or whatever? She's like, you you must have accidentally called home. And she obviously thinks that Adam is Anthony. Yeah. And then he's like, no, no, look, I was just trying to find Anthony. And she's like, who is this? Whatever, thinking it's a joke. And he hangs up because he's, he's scared. Uh, <clears throat> so, I, it's, it's, it's so hard to talk about Anthony, Adam, whatever, but... So we cut to uh, Anthony. I guess we introduced to Anthony because he called Kinda, Adam. Yeah. Adam calls him back the phone number. He speaks with him. And he's like, "Look, he's he's like freaking out. He's like, look, I I know this is crazy. I'm not stalking you. I I uh, we look exactly alike. I just think we should meet or whatever." And Anthony hangs up on him and he goes to talk to his wife. And his wife is Helen, and his wife's like, who is that on the phone? He goes, oh, it's that guy calling back again. Uh, he's saying, you know, we look a lot alike, and he wants to meet. And she's she thinks he's lying. She's like, are you lying to me? And he's like, mm-hmm. no, that was the guy on the phone. And we just saw the scene happen. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but she gets really upset and she says, basically, she kind of implies that he's seeing another woman again. Yeah. Given us this idea that Anthony's got a history of cheating. Which, again, heavily relevant. I think I see where you're going with it, but <laughs> we'll get there we'll get there. <clears throat> um, I'm dropping hints all so, over the place. And, and then he storms out, and then we get a pullback and realize, oh, Helen is pregnant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I see what you're doing here. Do you well, know? I think so. I, th- I see where it's all connected, but I don't understand how it's connected. Like, I get... I can see the, sh- the the lines being drawn. I just don't think they're very sturdy lines. A web, if you yep, will. Yep, yep, yep. I, 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 I read that theory, too. All right, let's, let's get you. into it. <laughs> uh, Anthony calls Adam back, and he's like, look, let's, let's di- differentiate these two. Anthony is an actor who is married to Helen, the pregnant woman. And Adam <laughs> is the college professor who is dating Mary. Yes. Uh, um, I don't know what exactly Mary does, but... Well, I don't really uh, think they ever say what she does. Um, Anthony calls Adam back and he's like, look, let's meet. Let's meet at this hotel, uh, you know, whenever. Before that happens, though, Helen decides she's going to try and she's going to go and find Adam. And so she goes to campus. She kind of sits down on a bench and she's kind of just waiting for him. And lo and behold, he walks out and he sits down and she looks visibly terrified. Oh, yeah. Like she sits on this bench and she's kind of freaking out internally. And Adam spots her, and he's trying to be polite, and he's like, hello. And she just kind of just stares at him like, what the fuck? Which, I mean... From her perspective, yeah, yeah that's kind of crazy. Um, she's confused as shit. So yeah, they, they kind of chat back and forth, but he doesn't. she doesn't introduce herself as Anthony's wife, or why she's freaked out, and Adam's, <laughs> Adam makes a great, like, meta line that's like, you never know where your day's gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> before walking off. And then we cut back and Helen's in her house and she is like, again, visibly upset. Uh, Anthony comes in and I guess he's been like running, jogging, whatever. And he comes in and he's just talking away about his day. And he's like, honey, where are the blueberries? I, do we have the blueberries? I said, I'll, I'll need the blueberries. And she kind of walks out of the room and he's like, what? I just, I'm, I need blueberries. Yeah. And so he goes to ask her, <coughs> excuse me, why she's so upset and she's like, I went and saw him. And Anthony's like, who? He goes, I went and saw Adam. He looks exactly like you. He sounds exactly like yeah. you. And she's like, what is happening? And Anthony's like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And she says, I think you know. And she has like this accusing tone in her mm-hmm. voice, like this mm-hmm. accusational tone. And it's at this point, I was like, okay, what? This is obviously something deeper than just two Which, guys that look alike. as the audience, when she's like, I think you know. I mean, in my case, I yelled, well, I fucking I was gonna don't. Say, we, we have no idea. <laughs> um, we we get another a scene. It's uh, the same hallway from earlier, like the Eyes Wide Shut hallway. And this naked woman with a mask is walking down the hallway and walks by either Adam or Anthony. I can't really tell which one it is. Yeah, I have no idea which but one. But it's like a nightmare scene because yeah. Adam wakes up, I guess, from it. And uh, he drives to the hotel to meet Anthony. So this one, I, so, okay, so that scene, I think... The nightmare, we're seeing Anthony, but it almost Adam's seems like out. Adam's the one waking up from the nightmare. We're seeing Anthony really doing something, but Adam is waking up like it's a nightmare. Yes. Okay. Uh, they go. <laughs> Adam and Anthony <laughs> go to this hotel room and they meet. <clears throat> this is the part in the movie where I realized no one turns on light to this movie. No, no. This is a dark movie. Everyone like, like has like one little nightlight on in their room, yeah. and that's it. As, um, as the room we're sitting in, I have like eight lights on. Yeah. Adam, Adam is sitting there waiting. Anthony comes in, and they get a good look at each other for the first time. And it's it's kind of weird because Anthony is more looking them up and down, whereas Adam's kind of in shock, yeah. like holy shit. And the first thing Anthony says is, "Maybe we're brothers." Doubt it. Yeah, and Adam's like, "No, I, I don't think so." And then uh, Anthony's like, "Well, wait a minute. Let me see your hands." And they look at each other's hands, and their hands are the same. And Anthony asks Adam, "Do you have the same? Do you have a scar on your chest?" And Adam looks like he is going to piss his pants. Yeah. And Anthony lifts his shirt up. And sure enough, he's like, you got, you do, don't you? You have the same scar I do. And uh, Adam just gets freaked out. And he's like, this was a bad idea. I got to go. And he get, runs outside, gets in his, his Jetta, and jets out of there. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> so now the relevance of the Jetta. So yeah, let's talk about. <laughs> um, that, that's the one thing I got nothing to say. So Anthony gets around on a motorcycle and well, and I kind of like this transition right here. Like the whole before this, Adam is the one like kind of he's the one interested like he's the one that's like trying to find anthony yada yada and find out answers this is kind of where that meeting is where it takes a turn like now anthony's intrigued so i feel like adam is is interested because he just wants to know what's going on whereas anthony sees it as an opportunity right he's like oh this guy looks like me i could use that to my advantage Stunt double yeah so even though you know he's just like an extra anthony starts stalking mary he yeah. Kind of follows her out of uh, the building with with Aunt, with Adam and Adam and her leave, and he starts following her, and he he kind of just follows her all the way to work, sees where she's at, and kind of just sits outside and waits for her. And then, uh, I <laughs> Adam's having a meeting with his mom. Like I say, he's at his mom's house and they're having dinner, and he's telling her about Anthony, and she's like, you know, well, look, I never, you don't have any brothers, you know, I only have one kid, whatever, it's you, uh, whatever, and then. She offers him blueberries, and Adam's like, I don't like blueberries. Relevant? <laughs> blueberries are relevant here, man. So, we also get this offhanded comment from Adam's mom to that he should stop trying to make uh, his acting career work, because apparently Adam wants to be an actor, which is, again, it all kind of ties together. The next shot in this movie is like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, uh, we get another wide shot of this city. And I gotta say, we get two shots of the city, right? Yeah. We get this really wide shot of the city and this, again, this orange kind of smoggy look at it. And I noticed watching this because I watched, I, I'll admit, I watched this on my laptop to get ready for this episode. And I was of like, you did. I saw something on the horizon. I was like, what the fuck is that? Because it looks like a building, but a building that has is like a ball at the top with the rest of the building off to the side, like, legs. I was like, what the fuck is this building? And then we get another shot, and it turns out, oh, it's a giant fucking spider yeah, walking like over the city. skyscraper size spider. With, like, uh, like Salvador <coughs> Dali long yeah, yeah. legs. Very, like, spider. exaggerated. Like, and it's just walking over the city, and then we cut to the next scene, like, nothing just fucking happened. And... Anthony is rehearsing, it looks like. It looks like he's trying to get into character. Yeah. And he's he's basically planning on... Causing a scene in front of Adam and saying, look, the only way... Because he's, he's basically going to accuse Adam of sleeping with his wife. Yeah. Uh, Helen. And he's like, the only way to get to make things fair is that Anthony wants to take Mary off on a romantic getaway. He's like, I'll do that. I'll come back. I'll bring her back. And then I'll, I'll disappear forever. That's the only way to make things fair. Okay. That's his plan. Right. Sure. Yeah. It's, whatever we don't really get the full extent of why he wants this plan is this dude really just this like this much of a, a poon hound like apparently <laughs> he's like oh i found this girl i can take this girl from him because we look exactly alike whatever so sure enough adam uh anthony goes to adam's <laughs> house <coughs> oh i'm sorry before this though adam goes to anthony's house yep the house he couldn't get into before but he kind of goes in and kind of just sits around the, the front office area of it, hoping that it'll be kind of like what happened with that, the talent agency, yeah. where someone will just kind of let him in because he looks like Anthony. Like, Adam just gets by on sheer luck yeah. alone through yeah. this entire <laughs> movie. It's insane. So the bellhop comes out and lets him in, and they take the elevator up to their to Anthony's room for Adam. Anthony's on the elevator with the bellhop going to Anthony's room. Uh, and the bellhop... Yeah. As they're riding the elevator, the bellhop makes a comment. He's like, I can't stop thinking about last night. I know we're not supposed to be talking about this, but I'd love to go back. Yeah. And Adam's like, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. But he kind of just nods his head like, yeah, yeah, he, yeah sure. He's talking about the, the room weird, the, beginning, the yeah. eyes wide shut scene. Yeah. And he's like, they changed the locks and sent out new keys. I need to go back. And he's, that's what he says. It's not Now it's it went from I'd love to go back to I need to go back. And so the bellhop lets... Add him into Anthony's room, because why wouldn't he? And no one's home. And, uh... The, Come on. Come on. I, I, I've skipped the scene, so I'm trying to cut back, because it's it's hard to keep track of this movie. As this is going on, a- Adam did... Con- uh, Anthony did confront Adam and say basically this is what he said he was going to do. He's mm-hmm. like, 
look, I think you fucked my wife. The only way to make things fair is for me to take your girlfriend out on this romantic getaway. And I, and Adam's terrified. He's like, okay, whatever. Do what you want to do. And yeah, so which... Adam's kind of a Kind of weird. He's just kind of like, yeah, okay, that's cool. All and right. so, yeah, they Adam uh, is over at Anthony's house and, Anth- and with his girl. And, and Anthony and goes Anthony's to Adam. with Adam's girl yeah. at a hotel, and they're having a the sex The same scene. hotel they met. met they met him, yeah. And Anthony... In in uh, Mary are having this uh, you know passionate rough sex scene, and then she starts freaking out, and she realizes that that is not Adam; it's a- that it's someone else. Because uh, Anthony was smart enough to take his wedding ring off, but to, to blend in with Adam, but the mark of the ring is still on mm-hmm. his finger, and Mary is freaking out. You know, who are you? Adam doesn't have a wedding ring or a mark, and. And then he's trying to, uh, you know, convince her. No, no, I'm totally uh, Adam. Look, I've always had this, whatever. And she's like, "Take me home, take me home right now." And they're they're driving down the road, and she's very upset. And Anthony's like, again, still trying to convince her that she's Adam. Is like, yep. I don't know what the big deal is, whatever. They get into an argument. She says that he's not a real man, or whatever, because I guess he technically raped her. I guess, kind of, yeah. It's a weird, you know. Rape comes up way too often in our show. I gotta You're, be honest. Yeah. But anyways, oh man, they have they have this argument, and in this argument, I guess Ad, uh, Anthony kind of loses control of the vehicle and flips and rolls down the interstate. Yeah, I mean it's and a pretty brutal. Uh, it's a pretty rough car wreck. wreck, and I guess you're led to believe that they both died in this car mm-hmm. wreck. We cut back. Meanwhile, to, we cut back, back to, to Anthony's. <laughs> we cut back to Anthony's house where Adam is, and he's meanwhile bombs, back on the farm. He's by himself, and he's kind of just going through Anthony's stuff. He's like. Dressing in a nicer wardrobe because Anthony's clothes. Mm-hmm. He's kind of making his bed. Uh, he's going around looking at his house and he realizes Anthony has the same torn photo that Adam had from the beginning. But, but it, it's actually Anthony in the photo, presumably, yeah. with Helen's arm wrapped around him. Yep. And so Adam's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then he's just sitting there again, dressed nice to the T because he's in Anthony's clothes. And Helen comes home and believes Obviously, that Adam is Anthony. Yeah, uh, and that made, that made me want to ask: Does does Anthony did he put a wedding ring on in order to blend? It? Oh, I'm mean, sorry, did Adam. Adam. Did Adam put a wedding ring on to convince her that he's Anthony? Or I don't think he would. I, don't I feel know. like he would skip that detail without even thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, because we don't ever get to see it. But Helen comes home and she says, "You know, I thought you were at your mom's," and I that's what I was like, "Okay, <laughs> something. Yeah. What is happening?" But, um, so, she said, uh, you know, did you have a good, she makes a, they, they're kind of in this back and forth exchange, and it's, and it's a little awkward, because Adam is trying to be Anthony, but he's just doesn't have the same charisma and charm, and Helen makes a comment to him, she said, did you have a good day at school? And Adam's like, what? And she goes, forget it, and just kind of walks off. So, you're led to believe Mary knows that. You mean Helen? Uh. Sorry. <laughs> Helen knows. There's so many women and men. I know. Helen knows. I mean, you know, you're you're led to believe that Helen knows that Adam is not Anthony, but she's going to go along with it. Uh, they they have a sex they scene. They busy. They have a sex scene. And, and Oh, man. What's her line right there? Um, After they get down. After they have sex? Yeah. There's, I don't remember. Hang on. But she kind of baits him into the sex scene, too, which is interesting, because she's like, are you going to come to bed? And Adam, again, pretending to be Anthony, he's got to be like, yeah, sure. And he gets in bed fully clothed. She goes, aren't you going to take your clothes off? And they do. And they're having this sex scene as the car crash is happening for <laughs> Anthony and Helen. Um, but it's like the next day, Adam, <coughs> again, walking around Anthony's house, is just kind of like, he takes a shower. He hears over the radio about the car crash, but he kind of turns it off. Um, and he's just kind of getting ready for the day and Helen comes out and, you know, they have a little conversation and mm-hmm. she goes back into the bedroom and Adam's like, you know, I, I was thinking of, are you doing anything tonight? Cause I was planning on going out and Helen doesn't respond. He's like, Helen, Helen. And then she doesn't say anything. So he walks back to the and... room. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have mentioned before I get there. Yeah. I messed up a little thing. You are getting over. I'm trying to get so, this. I'm trying so hard to get to the end of this movie. I keep forgetting little things. Uh, Adam 
finds the envelope where he originally got Anthony's address and phone number from, from the talent agency, and in his uh, coat pocket. And he go, he go, opens it up, and inside is <coughs> a brand new key. Impl- the key to the sex club, pretty to much. To the, the Eyes Watch Shut room. And that's when Adam says, hey, are you, think, are you going out tonight? I was thinking about going out. Helen doesn't respond. And he walks back into the bedroom where Helen is. And this, you know what? If you've seen the movie by now, you know what I'm going to say. But my notes are literally just ellipses. I yeah. don't I don't know so, what... So, she doesn't respond, so he walks into the room. And, like, I'm... It's so hard, like... No one's going to believe you if they haven't seen this movie. Yeah, like, what the ending of this movie is. It's the most, like... I know it's not going to sound cool or interesting or anything talking about it. But I'm going to do my best. Because it's just all, like... It's the culmination of this entire movie into this one terrifying shot yeah he walks into the room and then just up against the wall is the biggest fucking spider you've ever seen like a rooms and like it just a <laughs> room size tarantula tarantula it sees him and like it like he like cowers in it. fear like it cowers yeah. in fear and it just cuts back to Jake Gyllenhaal, who just sighs. He just looks at it, and he's like... <sighs> Cut to black. Credits. <laughs> it is the... The fuck? Oh my god, it's so fucking terrifying. The fuck is this movie about? <laughs> oh, I no idea. Alright. There is obviously a lot to unpack here. But, before we get there... There are two little trivia notes that I would like to mention. This movie is based on a novel called The Double by Jose Saramago. And apparently there's another movie out by the same name, The Double, that is also an adaptation of it. So I'm kind of interested to see with that movie, how that movie compares to this one. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I want to. Yeah. Now, obviously the biggest thing to talk about with this movie are the spiders, right? What does it mean? Well, fuck you if you were hoping to look up and see what the director or Jake Gyllenhaal has to say about it because the cast had to sign confidentiality agreements that doesn't allow them to speak or explain what the meaning of the fucking spiders are. That's fucking nuts. <sighs> okay. You, you've had more time to process this movie than I have and you've obviously done more research than I have. Why don't you tell me what you think the movie is about okay. and what the spiders mean? Like I said, this is one of the biggest theories you'll find online, but I I, I like it. Okay. The spiders represent women. I, I agree with that. And his pretty much... Like, Anthony is the real person. Does that... This is, God, this is going to be so confusing. Okay. It's... It's Anthony. It's all Anthony. It's all Anthony, really. I kind of agree with that. But so the spiders represent women and his pretty much um, the way he like views them. Um, and like like he like his fear of commitment, pretty much. Okay. Like because think like the big the massive spider in the city scene that's immediately after the mother scene. Um, I mean, obviously the fucking ending. Um. There's so many references to, like, him being caught in, like, this web almost. Like, in the car crash, the glass almost does, like, a spider web crack. There's the shot of the power lines looking like a massive web. There's a bunch of shit. Okay. But. So, your theory is Anthony and Adam are the same person. It's mostly Anthony... That we see. Yeah, like, he has, all like, the Anthony-Adam interactions, I feel like that's more, like, his, like, in my mind, that's his subconscious argument. So, it's almost like a itself. Fight Club, Tyler Durden kind Kinda, of Kind of, yeah. Okay. I disagree. Okay. But I agree with the spider theory. I agree. The spiders represent infidelity, or they represent just how Anthony, not Adam, Anthony sees women. Okay. Like... It cowers in fear at the end because he sees that as like, oh, I'm in, I'm powerful. Yeah, you know, because he goes off on her when she accuses him of cheating. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's con- Anthony's constantly trying to be in control of women, and that's why I think he he sees it as, 
oh, this is a creature that's supposed to be terrifying, that's cowering in fear for me. I could squash it at any time, which is what I think the woman's heel at the beginning on the spider is supposed to represent. Because he, Anthony's sitting there watching it, and he's, you know, this woman's got her heel about ready to crush the spider, and I feel like that's how he feels, too. Like, that's how he feels about women. Okay? Okay. Uh, with the Adam character, I feel like him and his speech is all about, uh, you know, chaos is order. It's all about control. Uh, this, this is all a pattern. His life is kind of set. Like, it's repetitive. That's why we see the lecture and the candlelit dinner and the sex scene over and over. Nothing's really changing from it. I feel like it's, like you said, like a web. Like, he can't escape from it. It's <laughs> right. all, you know, a web is almost a big circle. Right. And he's just going around in it. Yeah. Right? It's just it's History just, repeats itself. Exactly. I think it's two separate characters. It's two separate people. Okay. I cannot explain to you... If they're like clones or if they are brothers or what. I believe his mom when she says I, I, I don't want to say it's also alternate realities either. I wanna say it's just I can't give you a definitive thing, but it's almost like coincidence. Now, do you think the movie is told chronologically? Hmm. <laughs> I kinda do. Well, See, then here's the, here's the question. Do you think that's Anthony at the beginning of the movie in the Eyes Wide Shut room, or that's Adam? Well, with my theory, technically, it's, it's, it's Adam. I think it's Adam. Well, see, my I mean, my theory, Anthony and Adam are the same person. Okay. Well, is it Adam, quote-unquote, or Anthony, quote-unquote? Because we see the wedding ring, which does lead me to think that it's Anthony at first glance, but now I'm thinking it's Adam. I'm thinking the first scene in the movie is actually the last scene with... Uh, him going, sitting in the car. See, I think one of the last scenes in the movie is the first scene. Which one? The car crash. Okay. Alright, so... That's a weird... <laughs> that's, I don't understand how that order of events lays out, but I'll take your word for it. I think the first scene of, of Anthony or Adam going to the Eyes Wide Shut sex room... Is Adam going there for the first time? Okay. Because he at the end of the, I think the movie is pretty much straightforward in terms of events up until that point. The fuck it is. I, well, I mean, like linear. It's all linear. Gotcha, gotcha. I think he's going there with the key he just got. Because the first time we see the key, he's kind of flipping it over in his hands as he's walking down the hallway, and I feel like that's Adam <laughs> getting the key. Like, what the hell could this okay. key go to? He opens the room. He goes in, and he looks completely out of place in that room. Yeah. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, he has those sunglasses on, too. The the Gucci-looking sunglasses. If I'm not mistaken, I think he does when he walks in. Mm. Not only that... No, he doesn't. You don't think so? I might be wrong about that. But the way he that. sits down and looks around the room, he looks like he's never been there before. And okay. then, when he has that kind of... Sitting there with his hands almost covering his eyes as the platter's coming down. He doesn't know what's under it. I feel like that's him again being like, I have no idea what's going to happen here. I'm terrified, whatever. What was Anthony into? Or whatever. But that's what I think. I think that first scene happens at the end, technically. Okay. And I think he... But I also think that Adam is kind of becoming Anthony. Not just in the, you know, taking over his life. But the way he walks into the room and, find, and sees Helen for the first time as a spider... I feel like that's him again in the room. He's seeing the spider again. I feel like he's not actually seeing spiders. He's seeing a woman of some kind. You know what I mean? Okay. So the first time he, the first time Adam physically sees a spider is when he sees Helen. And I, again, it's not a real spider. That's obviously how he sees it. I think that's him becoming Anthony for good from now on. Pretty much. Kind of taking over that personality and everything. Taking over his identity, too. Okay. Now, again, I can't explain... Anything about I can't this explain fucking movie in actuality? If they're, if they're two separate characters, I cannot tell you how. If they're brothers or whatever, uh, or twins, you know, I don't know. Because I, I can't explain it, then, if they're two separate characters. Well, I guess you could, technically. You don't ever... 
No one ever sees them together on screen except them, each other, right? Right. Okay. So that, does that mean the first time that Helen sees Adam and he, you know, he says, you know, you never know where your day's going to go. And he walks around to his classroom and she calls Anthony and he picks up and says, what? That he basically walked around the corner, picked up his phone and said, what? <laughs> like she called him? No, it's... Okay, well then how about Again, this? How about this? We are what, getting trolled this whole fucking movie, I swear to what God. What do you think she means by saying, when she says, what is happening, and saying, I think you know? What do you think she means by that? Because I don't have an answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, that one I honestly have no idea. Is she, I think is she implying... No... No, nope, can't be that. I, mean, I think most of Helen's entire arc is her thinking he's cheating on her again. That's what I thought, too. But she says that line after she goes and sees Adam. For your theory, obviously, it wouldn't mean really much of anything. But for mine, it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what she can be. Because at that point, she's already seen the, the evidence that there really is a guy out there that looks exactly like him. What? Man, I feel like I should have done more research before I, we did this episode because there's got to be an, there's got to be someone out there who's nailed it, whether they realize it or not. They've got to have nailed it by now. And then my other question is, what do you make of the colleague that recommends the movie to him? Because that's what sets this whole movie in motion. I mm. I have no answer for that either. Yeah, unless. This, the, the colleague is kind of supposed to be like a guardian angel kind of thing where he's like mm. nudging him in the right direction. Because otherwise, why recommend that movie to him? That's a very specific movie that obviously had very specific reasons for being chosen. Are oh, you just doing research? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, you got no answers? I got nothing. Well, if you've seen the movie and you think you got it figured out, let us know on Facebook.com slash Silver Linings Playlist. Drop us a message or a post. Tag us in it, whatever. Let us know what you think. Cause that's all I got, man. I can't. I'm going to be awake all night. I, I I'm watching this fucking movie I think, again. I think I'm the, watching it again right after you. I think right the after only this, thing we, we nailed down is what is, I, I'm pretty sure we're right about the spiders. About at least what they recommend. I don't know anymore. No? I don't know what's happening. You took it back? No. I, I think it represents at least women of some sort in some shape or form. Uh, but other than that, I can't explain the colleague guy. I can't explain if they're the same characters or not. I don't want them to be the same character because I feel like that's been done. I want it to just... They're just two separate guys. It ain't been fucking... It hasn't been done like this. <sighs> Seriously, like... I mean, it basically has. Fight Club. If you just... Take Marion. My Helen. no, Fight Club did not make my brain explode. <laughs> if you take, that's because they wrapped, they explained it to you all in the end. This yeah. one does it. No, at all. If you took Mary and Helen and combined them, that's Helena Bonham Carter's character, basically. Oh shit! <laughs> I don't know, man. It's I love the movie. Don't get me wrong, I've seen it once, but I loved it, and I. I I'd have to get pen and paper, get out a bulletin board, get some red strings, some thumbtacks, some photos, and start drawing up lines. I feel like by the end of this, it would be that scene in It's Always Sunny where Charlie's working in the mailroom. Yeah. And he's like, Carol! Where, where is it where he's like, there is no, what's the guy's name? He's like, I've, I've been trying to deliver mail to this guy. And Pepe. I realize, Pepe Sylvia? Is that? I think there so. is no Pepe Sylvia. <laughs> Something like that. No, That yeah, would no, be me. Yeah. That would be me at the end. That would be just bulletin boards and string drawn and everything. Like, I'm fucking stumped. I'm not, God. Yeah, this is one of the few movies that we've seen that I just genuinely cannot tell you. I feel like there's... Great sp- movie, though. No, it's a fantastic movie. I feel like there are people out there that are way smarter than me that could figure oh, this out. Oh, yeah. So, for all of you out there that are definitely smarter than us... Uh, Let us know. Help! <laughs> um, anyway... That's not the point of this podcast. The podcast is not trying to figure out the movie. It's our duty, our job, to give people a silver lining for this movie. So, obviously, in your scenario, our lead character dies. Right? No. Well, no. Anthony dies. And no. you're saying 
That no scene takes. Oh, okay, never mind. You're saying he doesn't. He, die does, he in escapes the car, the car wreck. wreck. He escapes the car wreck. Yes. Basically. Okay, so th- <laughs> this is gonna be so difficult to do. <laughs> I was going to say, give me your silver lining, but yours kind of doesn't end, in your version of the movie, it doesn't kind of end on a quote-unquote downer ending. What What is the final scene of your version of the movie? Him seeing Helen. Spider Helen. Okay. Like, the actual last scene of the movie is the actual last scene of the movie, I think. So how do you think that's a downer ending that you can give a silver lining to? Because it seems like you kind of... Everything kind of worked out for him. The fuck it did? If the, if the opening scene is the car wreck, then everything from then on in, nothing terrible He's really happens. still happens. living in fear. <laughs> Let me give you my, my silver lining. I, again, I stand by this theory. And it is a theory, because I can't prove it. At least not This whole right fucking now. movie's a theory. Maybe we need to revisit this movie and like we'll do like a, re, uh, a re-review of this movie in like a year. Or something, we'll like come back to this one on like our fiftieth or hundredth episode and try and do it again and piece it together. But I still won't be able. To, nope, I don't care how many times I've watched this movie. I've watched it. I've seen this movie like six or seven times. I'm gonna. I say, still don't fucking get it. I would say kind of the same thing that pretty much other than the little eyes wide shut room that Adam, not Anthony, Adam seeing Spider Helen is the last scene in the movie. And if we're if we're sticking to this idea that Adam and Anthony were two separate characters. I think Adam's going to have a pretty sweet life from now on because he has a lot of money, obviously. He has a better job, better clothes. Uh, he has a more permanent relationship with a wife versus a girlfriend. You know? Yeah. I, I, the only thing that's going to be downer is when he tries to act for the first time and realize he can't. Yeah. So, All right. My, so, okay. So, to go back to why I think it still has a downer ending if it technically ends the way it ends, it's because, like... Anthony, who it's Anthony the whole fucking time. Uh, whatever. Shut up. <laughs> I don't believe it. it. He doesn't change. As he says, you know, it. it's a never-ending cycle. Mm-hmm. He doesn't change. He's still the same shitty, cheating spouse that he was at the beginning. Um, And again, I'm reaching so hard for this silver lining. Okay. I think Helen's finally like standing up for herself a little bit. Okay. Um, Because, okay, so this, I don't want to explain the whole thing, but the spider at the beginning that's getting stepped on, I think, represents Helen. And the reason the big-ass spider at the end cowers is because it's afraid, afraid of getting stepped on again. But I think the spider being so large in size kind of is kind of symbolic that she's still scared, but she's... That's why it cowers in the corner, pretty right, much. Right, okay. but she's... I think it's symbolic for her, like, having the strength to stand up to him and confront him finally, but she's still scared. But I think the seed of her being able to... We gotta read this script, man. I gotta find Fuck. it. I gotta find it. We gotta read it. Maybe if we find it, we'll post it on, on the Facebook yeah. page, but... Um, well, what do you think about this then? What do you think, what do you make of the line in your version of the movie? What do you make of the line, uh, that tragedy happens, you know, events happen twice in history. Once as a tragedy, once as, once as a facade or farce. farce. What, what do you, all the greatest world's events. So in your, in that obviously has to apply to something in the movie. So in your version of the movie, what is the event that happens the first time as a tragedy? And what is the second time that's a farce? Are you saying that the car wreck is the tragedy? No, not necessarily. Um, I got nothing. I, nothing. I'm uh, sorry. I got nothing. Hmm. I'm gonna try and like I could sit here and try to bullshit something, but you could you would just poke, yeah. I'm just gonna go you off could poke holes in it so much. I'm gonna go off the top of my head, and I'm gonna try and think of something right now, and because there's got to be a meaning to it. I'm gonna say, uh, oh. Okay, so wait, mine wait. might be complete bullshit, but I think I got something. Do you think that the reason the sec in the first sex scene, well, not the first sex scene, but the first time where Mary kind of winces in pain and kind of freaks out that that's Anthony taking over in your version of the movie, over uh, rather than Adam? Oh shit! Because there's got to be a reason she kind of like she's like owl or whatever, and she kind of rolls over. It's possible. 
Okay. Hmm. I got. I want to nail something before we go on this tragedy farce thing. There's because there's gotta be something. Okay. There. You said you had something. Uh, yeah, I literally just came up with this twenty seconds ago. Okay. I think the tragedy. Is it a physical? Does it have to be a physical? No. Tragic event, no. or can it no, be no. emotional? I, I think the internal? tragedy is it's emotional. It's the tragedy is Helen staying with him, knowing he's cheated on her okay and the farce i think is and it's pretty much her fear of it and i think the farce is in that final scene when the big ass spider cowers because like i said i think the size of the spider represents something like okay. her inner strength okay I, I can so get i think that. her fear like she the big ass spider acts scared but i think in actuality it's a farce yes oh i can get behind that I think that ending shot's got to be that's obviously not, one of the let's tragedies. Let's not focus or, on it too much because yeah. it, it could fall apart very easily. Um, I think the car wreck's got something to do with one of them. I mean... Or unless it's a red herring, but... This movie is filled with red herrings, honestly. Um, man, we could talk about this movie oh, for Oh, yeah, long we could be here time. for hours. Uh... Let's let's so wrap it part up. two of Enemy uh, next Monday. Yeah, let's let's, <laughs> let's wrap it up for this week. Let's get let's let's bounce back. This movie's obviously yeah. We honestly we might have to come back to this one. We'll we'll, <laughs> we'll probably revisit this one for a, a later time. But let's go, let's do this. Let's this movie's obviously going to leave people with headaches, scratching their heads, yeah. and let's give them a, a simpler. And if you weren't an arachnophobe before, yeah, you are now. Let's let's give them a simpler. Oh my god! What if an arachno? Wait. What if someone scared of spiders watched this movie? Sucks to suck. <laughs> oh my god! I, I mean, one of the so opening scenes is a spider. So I mean, if you, I would think that if you see that, you realize those spiders are going to have some kind of prevalence. Yeah, but it escalates from there. Well, you only see spiders. Three I just want to show that ending scene to one person that's scared of spiders and see what happens. <laughs> Dude, I almost jumped out of my chair and I watched it on a laptop. I was like, "What the fuck?" I watched this in at like two in the morning, or I watched this with one of my old roommates because we were just like Jalen Hall and cool. We were, like, I knew it was the director of Prisoners, and we were like, cool, we love Jake Gyllenhaal. And that's that was all we knew. I had never seen a trailer for this or anything. And, yeah, we were confused as fuck. But I remember, specifically, it was, like, nighttime. All the lights were out, and that scene happened, and we jumped in <laughs> our seats. It's crazy, man. That ending is so fucking weird. So terrifying. So, again, let's... Because people are going to watch this movie and be like, uh, probably... Unless they're smarter than us. But people are going to watch this movie... Wouldn't rule it out. Yeah, and they're going to watch this movie. Let's give them a double feature that's going to bring it back down, make them a little happier, give them something, something to play with. What do you got? Eight-legged freaks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because you're going, you're going straight up. I'm just... I'm not ignoring up. those spiders. All right. Um, I had other options, but that one yeah, just that's, jumped that's out. That's not the me. one you wrote down. Originally. That is not the one I wrote down. <laughs> that's a good one, though. I like that one. Um, I'm going to go yeah. with another Jillian Hall vehicle. Okay. It's just so upbeat and fun. I'm going to go with Bubble Boy. If you haven't seen Bubble Boy, one of his earlier works, I want to say right after Donnie Darko. Yeah, I think it was like a, it's with, early, but within a year or two. You got some vintage Danny <laughs> Trejo in it. Oh, it's, yeah. It's a it's a stupid movie, but it's, it's it's fun. It is a silly film. It is a very stupid, silly movie, but it's a fun movie. All right. So, oh, man. Uh, so, if you've made it this far, thank you for listening. Please. I'm just going to apologize now. <laughs> you are all dumber for having listened to that rant. We'll call this part one. <laughs> part two, TBA, TBB. Yeah, yeah we're, gonna, we're coming back to this one. That's all there is to it. Uh, let's give... Uh, let's give up our, our you know our our spiel here. Please, uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe and rate. Leave us feedback on iTunes. <coughs> uh, find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Silver Linings Playlist. You can leave us suggestions for a movie that you'd like us to talk about. It's got a downer yes, or fucked please, up please, ending. Please do. Please do that. That'd be awesome. Don't. If anyone just after this episode comes out suggests Enemy <laughs> Part Two, don't. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> like our page there. Leave I'm us suggestions. Sad. Leave us posts on our page. 
share, just get the word out about us if you don't mind. We would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. So, uh, Mally, clue for next week's episode. What do you got for him? I have two. Okay. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be You're bold. Both. I'm gonna be okay. bold. I say our we our clue for enemy was very vague. Yeah. So let let's go easy on. I'll give him. I'll give him two. Okay. One a little more obvious than the other. But okay. First thing I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm trying to decide what order because one order of this could be very bad, badly worded. I'll go with that one. Okay. I'm gonna say, porno theater, is my first clue. Okay. My second clue, <laughs> like father, like son. Doesn't sound good together. No. Those no, are my no, two no, clues no. for next week. So, again, thank you for listening, everybody. Everybody. Every, yeah. Yep. Everybody. I'm sticking with it. Uh, please tune in next week. Uh, we will be doing a movie that's not enemy. But we'll probably still be sitting here trying to figure this movie we out. We probably won't leave until next week to do no. this one. All right, Mike, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Oh, I would like to give myself a plug, if you don't mind, real quick. Uh, yeah, is fine. It th- okay. I just want to announce that I have my website back up and running, DustinGoesToHollywood.com. <laughs> you can find my portfolio, my resume, uh, information about this podcast, actually, some artwork I've done. Uh, just, I'm looking for work, so if anybody wants to hire me, uh, go on my website. You can see my reels and check out some work that I've done. Well, you know what? On that note, I'm not going to plug myself because I'm not conceited. Mm-hmm. I'm going to plug someone else, though. Okay. I hate MattRobin.com. <laughs> Check it out. All right. Well worth It's not worth it, actually. Never mind. All right. Uh, with that, uh, do you have any last words yeah. you want to leave people with? As always, spiders. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even going to say anything. I was going to let you do it yourself. You want to try that again? Yes. Take two. As As always, always, Excelsior. Excelsior.